You want me to put that on my todger? Harry's wife. Online with Gabor Mate, utterly in her grip. Hello, I'm HD Tudor. Over the weekend, Harry, once again whining about his status and victimhood, appeared in an online appearance with Dr. Gabor Mate. The two sat there opposite one another in comfortable chairs by a fire with a great big plug for spare and both of their books either side of it so that if anybody was in any doubt as to what they were trying to do, it was, of course, to engage in some more merching. Camilla Long of The Times reported on this, and does so with the title Prince Harry Bears His Oozing Stigmata Yet Again. She writes, Imagine being a time traveller from the medieval period. Imagine you have landed in 2023. Imagine thinking, and how do the noble kings at the top of this golden and wondrous society inspire and guide their subjects? And flicking through some online stuff and seeing Prince Harry will unpack his trauma live, again, in an intimate conversation with Dr. Gabor Mate, what is happening? Why is he doing this? Has an old frosty pecker unpacked his trauma enough? It was the live bit that made me bellow, as if after all these years, after Megxit, the Mercy Flight, plus Dogs to Canada, Tyler Perry, Oprah, the Ripple of Hope Award, Anxiety, Pain, Racism, Archetyping, and now this week, the Frogmore Slap, the couple have told us they're actually okay with being booted out of Windsor, Harry thinks we still need to see yet more blood oozing from the tastefully airbrushed royal stigmata. It's quite some arrogance, that. Now, pausing there with regard to Camilla Long's article, bear in mind, were we treated to Harry banging on about his trauma prior to Harry's wife? No, we weren't. Was Harry going on about the therapy that he was involved in? Because he was. No, he made no mention of it. Was Harry appearing on repeated television programmes, talking about his trauma, the fact that he was a victim, etc. No, he didn't. He got on with things. And when you look at him there, he was this happy-go-lucky chap. And it wasn't a case that he was putting on some veneer towards people, that he was putting on a facade of being content and happy. He actually was. Undoubtedly, he had issues with regards to the death of his mother. That, of course, cannot be denied. But he was seen as the playboy prince that he would get out a bonkers night spot, chug back some gin and tonics, chase some skirt, attend to his duties, popped into the army, and people recognised. Yeah, he's a bit dim, but he's likeable. And he does what he needs to do. He's a member of the royal family. He's showing his, his service by being in the army. He turned up the charities. He set up his Invictus Games. Yeah, we like Harry. He gets on with it. And we know from those excerpts of Wow, that he was at his most content when he was in Africa and he was rolling up his sleeves and getting his hands mucky. I don't mean engaging in some finger blasting with Harry's wife. No. Harry was content with all of this and he didn't need to explore who he was. But then, of course, along came a spider. And the narcissist entered his life. And, as part of a cultural thing, but primarily, of course, utilising that cultural approach as a means of control, she honed in on his, on, on his vulnerabilities and told him that he needed to understand himself, that he needed to have more therapy, that he needed to explore the unresolved trauma. And boy, have we heard about it since. Again and again he bangs on about it. Why? Because like the member of the cult that he is, he has become convinced that what he's doing is correct and right. He has become convinced that what he talks about, that everybody ought to know about, that he thinks that he's doing people a favour. Look, I had all this unresolved trauma, and now I've got rid of it all, and I'm a better person for it all, and you can too. Yeah, go therapy. Yeah, go going public. 
Now, of course, therapy is a very private thing. And of course, it's fair enough if someone wants to say, therapy's worked for me. But Harry goes further than that. You get the warts and all. Why? Because that can be monetized, And it's part of the pity play by proxy that Harry's wife utilises, which of course she can, in due course, use it against him. See parts passing for my observations about that. But quite simply, prior to Harry's wife, Harry did not bang on about all of this crap. Since she's come along, he has become utterly convinced that he has to have all of this therapy, and moreover, he has to share it with the world. Not only does this become boring and tedious, but moreover, it becomes somewhat sanctimonious as he rams it down the throat of people, continuing to go on and on about it. But also, he unwittingly is creating a problem for himself, because all of these disclosures about his sustained drug use, about the temper tantrums that he's had, the way that he's felt, can all be used by the narcissist against him, as I've explained in parts passing. This latest bloodletting that Harry has engaged in is not only boring and tedious, but it is absolutely astonishing that somebody would be involved in this, diagnosing him in the manner that they've done, and putting this all up for public consumption. Returning to Camilla Long's article, she writes, Harry's trauma live stream, a one-hour live therapy session slash interview arranged by his publisher, with the Hungarian-Canadian doctor Gabal Mate, is the latest mutation in the Harry Harry's wife suffering industrial complex. The marketing was, you've read the book, you've seen the television series, you can experience the royal raindrops, pure uncut trauma and collapse in real time before watching him build himself up again with the help of a rock star therapist in a single hour. If that ain't a Victorian circus freak show act, I don't know what is. Pausing there, bear in mind also, where's Harry's wife's support for him in all of this? Does she not look at him and think, you shouldn't be putting all of this out there, this isn't good for you to be sharing this information so publicly and prostituting yourself in this way? Of course not. We know that because she doesn't care, because she has no emotional empathy for the Ginger Prince. Indeed, she believes that this is the right thing for him to do because it's the type of thing that she believes in, but also her narcissism utilises that to enable her to control him, to draw fuel from him, and use him as a tool within her empire for the acquisition of character traits and residual benefits. Returning to the article... Watching the live feed was extraordinary, like seeing Prince Harry being brainwashed live on global television. Whatever Dr. Marte said, Harry automatically agreed, capitulated, hung on every single breath. Even let him read out some nonsense German poem, at one point even saying to Marte, correct me if I'm wrong. It was like watching a prince being put under a spell. And in essence, it is just the extended spell that comes from his wife sitting opposite each other in yet another of the many bizarrely accoutred podcasting bungalows that seemed to clog Harry's part of California. Harry was dressed in a sort of Shane Warne Memorial Golf Dinner outfit. Taupe jacket, taupe jumper, taupe shoes. Only his trousers, navy chinos, suggested he'd ever been to England. Marte appeared in shades of Buddhist dad in crisis olive green, on his fingers were many rings. Never trust a man with man jewellery. He began the session with a Latin definition. Vulnerare, he cooed, is to wound. He invited Harry to talk about his childhood, or at least Harry said a few things about not getting hugs, and Marte nodded in approval. But when Harry suggested in some ways he had an incredible childhood, he shook his head solemnly. It was a story of deprivation. Harry looked chastened. When Marte read Harry's book, he was horrified. He saw a little child who was utterly abandoned, born into a marriage where there was a lack of love, born to a father who himself had been bullied mercilessly, born into a family where people are not held and held, he said. And what children born into such families? Animals. Animals. Even Harry was silenced. I'd never heard of Gabor Marte before this glossy fireside pile on, but to say Harry was no match for this strident, stern, overbearing little merchant of pain, albeit one with a million Instagram followers, 
would be an understatement. He invited Harry to see pain in almost everything, even one of the happiest times of his life serving in Afghanistan. Immediately, he let Harry know that he disagreed with the war, and instead of saying he was proud to serve, the prince quickly said, there were a lot of us who didn't necessarily agree or disagree, but you were doing what you were sent to do. Imagine the power Marte must feel. This British royal, bent at the knee, cringed, rolled over, accepted nearly every single one of his diagnoses. In the course of the chat, Marte diagnosed Harry with PTSD, ADD, depression, anxiety, and panic disorder, plus much more. Notice what he didn't do, cutting away from the article for a moment, is tell him that he was in the grip of the narcissist and that he was a victim. Completely failed to see that. And of course, either he's failed to see that because he's just not up to the job of spotting it, but you think that he ought to be, or that he knows it, but won't say it, because that doesn't fit the narrative of what he's being paid for. Returning to the article, I don't often feel bad for Prince Harry, writes Camilla Long. He's unflinching, unlikable, and bending on television, evangelical, and humorless in, humorless in tone. But he's mesmerised now, and he can't get out of it, and it's rather sad to watch. This, of course, is all indicative of the place that his wife has put him, causing him to believe each and every day the mantra of her saying, you've been badly treated by that family, it's wounded you, you've got unresolved trauma, you need to recognise this, I will help you, but you have to do what I say. The reason you talk to me in the way that you do, Harry, when you're naughty, when you're a bad, bad boy, is because of all of these unresolved traumas and you need to go and seek help, you have a problem. Harry's wife, under the auspices of false compassion, causes Harry to believe that he cares about her, but he doesn't realise that being subjected to these repeated displays of, as Camilla Long describes it, bearing his oozing stigmata yet again, that he's just making himself look like an absolute idiot that more and more people are becoming fed up of. It shows just how much he is in her grip, that she will have encouraged him to undertake this, once again giving him no counsel to protect him against such damaging disclosures and damaging behaviour, leaving him exposed, which of course she can use against him. Is there any sympathy to be found below the line? A. Thomas writes, the worldwide privacy tour continues. Oh, please do stop. I. Jones writes quite simply, wah, wah, wah. J. Y. Recollections may vary if he doesn't remember getting hugs from Princess Diana. Neil Gordon adds, horror of horrors, there is even videos of hugs, lots of them, endlessly. Poor boy, his memory has gone too. I. Jones again writes, we want privacy, we want privacy. Isla Matthews writes, which seems to include public psychotherapy sessions and a public diagnosis of ADHD. S. Walker, the South Park send-up was spot on. The worldwide privacy tour continues. N. H. Rafferty, be quicker to write about what he isn't suffering from. Charlie Mortimer, What's the medical verdict here? Is Harry suffering from a no medical condition of the mind, or is he a rather humorless, self-entitled, self-piteous individual whose anger and quest for some sort of vengeance against perceived slights knows no bounds? Caroline Charlemagne-Bedes writes, well, clearly Harry's wife wasn't the answer to all of his woes or a positive influence, as he's often claimed. His moaning and groaning only started after they met each other. Or is he just a mouthpiece for what she fills his head with in order to maintain centre stage? Indeed. Lots of comments, hundreds of them. In fact, 1,200 in the Times, none of which are complimentary. This activity shows once again the way that Harry has been completely indoctrinated and remained in the grip of his wife to the extent that he continues to make a total arse of himself. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.